Just the other day, we shared a video about how customers can do things when they go to buy a car that really frustrate and annoy car salespeople. We, we titled that video, Five Ways You Can Piss Off a Car Dealer. Dad, let's flip the script. I'm going to challenge you. What are the yeah. five, five, not 50, not 500, five? What are the five things that make the Mount Rushmore list of ways car dealers can piss off their customers? Oh, uh, well, number one on the list is, well, the way they advertise the price of the vehicles online. Okay, since the price that's advertised online is not the price that you're going to be told the car is if and when you get to the dealership. Um, the, the price online never seems to include, in a lot of cases, I, I won't make a blanket statement that this is for all car dealers because some car dealers do advertise accurately, uh, but a lot of car dealers, well, in the small print, it'll say plus freight, Great. I get that. Plus taxes and tags. I get that. Plus fees. I get that. Um, um, but they might have used incentives, uh, military incentive, first responder incentive, college graduate incentive. Well, that the vast majority of people looking at that price aren't going to qualify for. And then, as it turns out, when you actually get to the dealership, well, that's when they break it to you gently that there's a $7,500 market adjustment and $6,000 worth of dealer installed items. But other than that, that, that doesn't tend to piss customers off at all. <laughs> Quick shout out for our friends over at markups.org. They're crowdsourcing all the dealerships who are doing exactly what you just described. So if you've experienced it, go contribute that there. And also make your voice heard to the FTC. Still the open public comment period for dealerships that are doing that. Make the FTC aware that you do not like that. All right. What's number two on the list, Ed, that dealers uh, do number that piss two, off customers? They they, number two, they don't respond to an email or internet inquiry in a timely manner or at all, or answer the questions that were asked in the email. And uh, I know that for a fact because we offer templates on our Join YAA website for members. And many times we get comments from our members that, well, I sent out the template and, well, I can't even get a response. Um yeah, that, uh, I don't know why dealers think that somebody that's expressing a desire to perhaps buy a vehicle from them uh, isn't worthy of a response, but either it's lazy management or lazy salespeople, uh, but it, it's you'd be hard-pressed, A, to get a response, and, and if you asked for an out-the-door number, you'd be hard-pressed to get anything other than, hey, so when can you get in here to uh, so we can talk about this? Number three? Oftentimes, the salespeople ignore or talk down to the customers. And what I mean by that, um, and, and I used to go through this as a manager, uh, where I would have salespeople sitting at their desk the front door would open to the dealership and a customer would walk in. And at that very moment, my salespeople became sighted and hearing impaired. It was like, I, I, I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. You know, they would just absolutely ignore the fact that, well, somebody that could possibly put food on their table just walked into the dealership. And what I mean by talk down to customers if a, if, if a woman were to come in, in a lot of cases, salespeople would look at them and say, well, you know, when can you bring your husband in? Or when can you come back with your husband? Well, first of all, not every woman is married, okay? There are, there are plenty of single women out there who are buying cars and are decision makers. Uh, and even if they are married, they very well could be the decision maker. So how about you just talk to the person that is there? And if it's a husband and wife team, don't ignore the wife, okay? Absolutely do not ignore the wife and just talk to the husband. It, it And uh, nothing pisses off uh, customers quite like that. Yeah, yeah. Preach, Pops. I like this. You're a 71-year-old dude, and you get it, and I like that. All right, what's number four on the list? Uh, well, uh, salespeople or sometimes sales managers will make promises that they won't keep. So what I mean by that is if you're with a, a salesperson and you're looking at, say, a pre-owned car, and the tires are a little weak on the car, and you say something to the salesperson, and the salesperson says, don't worry about it, we'll take care of it, Okay, um, so if I were the customer, I'm thinking, okay, they're going to throw tires on the car. The salesperson's thinking, no, I just deflected. Okay, yeah. and mm. 
if you don't get it in writing as to what it is that they'll do, uh, they're not going to do it. So, um, you know, it, it happens every day in the car business where a salesperson say, don't worry about that. We'll take care of it. Don't worry. Um, you know, I'll get that handled. And, and it never, it doesn't get handled before delivery. Um, there's no uh, WIO that says the dealership has agreed to take care of this for the customer. So two weeks after delivery, you contact the dealership and say, well, the salesperson said that they were going to take care of this. The manager says, well, there's nothing in the deal that indicates that. So we're not. Um, that kind of pisses people off. Yeah, that's a big one. If you don't know what a we O is, just Google search we, W-E space O, O-W-E, Y-A-A. You'll find our video on that super interesting stuff. All right, what's number five on the list, Pops? Um, well, the dealership often plays games with your trade. Uh, once they appraise it, they might forget to give you your keys back, or they might somehow have misplaced your keys, or, well, the the normal situation is, well, they'll lowball you on the value of your trade, um, and customers hate that, um, and, and I hated it as a manager. I, I used to have a, a, a used car manager that I would work with. And we would ask him to appraise a car, and mm -hmm. the first thing he would say to the salesperson is, "Well, well, uh, how much does the customer want for it?" And I used to look at the at the used car manager and go, "Doesn't matter what the customer wants for it. What matters is what's it worth. Just tell us what it's worth. Don't make it worth based on if the customer has no idea what it's worth, and you think you can steal it. You're going to try and steal it. Just." Just give the customer the actual cash value, the ACV. When I used to work deals with customers, I wouldn't work trade allowance. I would work the bottom line price that I would sell the car for, and then I would share with them what the actual cash value was for their trade, what we would write a check to them for if we were going to buy the trade. So... A lot of dealerships will play games with the trade. They'll lowball the trade. They'll 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 do trade allowances. They'll inflate the value of the trade to make it look like they're getting more um, when when they're not really increasing the actual cash value of the trade. So customers hate when dealerships play the game of uh, oh uh, uh, I don't I I don't know where the keys are really. Come on, how many cars are you appraising at one time? And and even yeah. if you're appraising a bunch, your desktop's big enough for all the keys to sit on the desktop. <laughs> we have back on the Join YAA website, just go to the homepage, click on the little cell tab. You can actually put in your vehicle info in one place. And then there are, I think it's 15 different uh, dealerships and websites and things like that. They're, they're integrated on the back end. So if you're in an area where you can get multiple quotes for a vehicle without ever even going to a dealership, you can get them all aggregated there in one place. Super happy that we have that because we're seeing people sell their cars through that rather than dealing with all the uh, BS at yes. the dealership, Dad, like you were just describing. All right, so those are five. Let's ask it. Let's ask everyone that's made it this far in the video. Leave a comment down below. What did we miss? What are the other things that that piss off customers at the dealership? I bet every every viewer can come up with five different ones than I just gave you. Okay? So Give us, as as a commenter, give us the five that bother you that don't necessarily match up to the five that I gave, just gave out. Love it, Pops. Thanks for doing this. My pleasure, Handsome.